How's it going guys? Difficult question for gastro step one surgery internal medicine to CK. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, LMN underscore medical, and the HLMN underscore medical links down below for me in Telegram links to the Telegram group of channel down below in a start clip. 49 year old man brought to emergency by his wife 30 minutes after abrupt onset abdo pain where he feels like he was kicked in the abdomen. He has a history of abdominal pain after meals for which he takes over the counter and acids. Vitals are temperature 100 Fahrenheit, heart rate 90, your spiritual rate 16, blood pressure 150 over 95, x-ray the chest is shown. Which of the following is mostly the diagnosis? We have this chest x-ray here, which I jacked off of Wikipedia. Arrowhead pointing to something. I'll talk about this as we move to the question. What's the diagnosis? Choice A, duodenal hematoma, wrong fucking answer. I've only seen this asked once on a surgery form for 2CK, and it was a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning you eliminate to get there. The question was a big 15-line paragraph where they mentioned somewhere in there that the guy had bilious vomiting and that there was blood in the vomitus. And you would say, well, that's the only answer we eliminate. We say that's the only answer where there could be some form of abdominal obstruction in theory. And that's why the guy probably has bilious vomiting. A hematoma is just a collection of blood. Okay, you're not actively exsanguinating out uncontrolled. You might have bleeding, a ruptured artery as an example, but it's, uh, it's confined to the boundaries of surrounding tissue. And we call that a hematoma. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, hemothorax, wrong fucking answer. So blood in the plural space. I knew a simile. This will also be a diagnosis of exclusion where you eliminate to get there. And they'll give it to you in the setting of either massive trauma or malignancy. Okay, so they might say that someone has a history of breast cancer or lung cancer and that there's uh, dullness to percussion on either the left or the right side. And you say, well, that sounds like there's going to be fluid there. You say, well, it's not pneumonia. There's no fever. It doesn't sound like a pneumonia. And you say, well, that's probably a fluid collection. And then you're eliminating the answers. You're like, well, not, not pneumothorax as an example. And then you're like, well, malignancy plus dullness percussion, some sort of effusion. The answer will be malignant pleural effusion, okay? And you can also get flattened neck veins if you're actively bleeding, right? If you're losing volume from the vascular space, you can get fl flattened neck veins sometimes with a hemothorax. And I say that because if you had a tension pneumothorax, obviously you'd have, you'd have hyper resonance rather than dullness percussion, but in a tension pneumothorax, uh, in contrast, remember that you get JVD, not flattened neck veins. So they could have that as a distractor and the student's confused and it's like, well, it's fucking dullness percussion, not hyper resonant. And notice they don't say JVD, they say flattened neck veins in this case. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, perforated viscous, correct answer. This viscous means an organ, literally, and it refers to ruptured small bowel, classically duodenum. And it can be in the setting of a patient who's had history of duodenal ulcers. Now, in this case, I made it a little bit easier. I said, well, he's had a history of abdo pain after meals, implying that he's had some sort of ulcer history, and now it finally has perforated. And this will cause air under the diaphragm. Okay, so uh, pneumoperitoneum, as this is referred to, the USMLE actually doesn't give a fuck about you being able to identify this x-ray per se. This is more challenging. I mean, clearly you can look at it. It's not, I don't think this is too out of left field, this x-ray, but we have this history. The guy is going to feel like he was kicked in the abdomen. That's very buzzy. As per my observation on NBME exams for ruptured viscous, it'll be very sudden. And then you have this air under the diaphragm and on 2CK, they can give you the same fucking question. And then the answer, they say, what's the next best step in management? Okay, apart from airway, breathing, circulation, stuff like that, they say, next best step in diagnosis. And the answer is going to be x-rays of the chest and abdomen. I have never seen them force you to choose abdo x-ray versus chest x-ray, but I've seen x-ray of the, of the chest as an answer. I've seen x-ray of the chest and abdomen combined as an answer. So that's how we diagnose ruptured viscous. The patient's going to need surgery, surgical correction, clearly. So... High yield diagnosis for you assimilate that uh, duodenal ulcers can perforate and you get air under the diaphragm. And then the, you say, well, what's going on with the vitals here? This You can get a low-grade fever in systemic inflammatory response center, okay, which this temperature actually isn't high enough uh, for that. It would be 38 Celsius, which I believe is around 100.5-ish, um, but heart rate 90 or above, and his leukocytes might be elevated as well. The elevated blood pressure could be from the stress response. So just quickly through the final answer choices, pneuma biliary, wrong fucking answer, it's air. Air in the biliary tree, which for 2CK, uh, that is going to be gallstone ileus, 
where it's going to be two answers, either gallstone ileus straight up, which means you have a gallstone that's made its way down into the small bowel, and then it's become lodged. It could be in the terminal ileum by all means. But you have an obstruction within the small bowel due to uh, a massive gallstone, and that can cause air in the biliary tree, air in the liver. It can also be if you have a cholecystoduodenal fistula. Okay, if you look this up, pneumobilia, they'll say it classically means a fistula. I've seen that as an answer as well. Okay, they'll say, give you a big fucking paragraph. You have no idea what's going on. In the last line, they just say, air is visualized in the biliary tree. Air is visualized in the liver. You're like, what the fuck? And then the answer is just cholecystoduodenal fistula. Okay, so if you have inflammation of the gallbladder in the setting of recurrent stones, for whatever fucking reason, that can cause a connection, a fistula between the gallbladder and the small bowel. Okay, so I know it sounds weird, but for 2CK, you're going to see that a couple times show up. Pneumothorax around fucking answer, as I already talked about, uh, this would give you hyper resonance, not dullness to percussion. It doesn't fit the, the vignette here. Okay, so obviously spontaneous pneumothorax can be a tall, lanky, young patient who has a, a ruptured subapical bleb. That's the mechanism. Uh, you can get ipsilateral tracheal shift. Pneumothorax plus low blood pressure equals tension pneumothorax. Doesn't have to be from trauma, okay? It can just be a spontaneous pneumothorax that keeps growing. And then you get a contralateral tracheal shift. There's a new 2CK question actually, where they tell you the trachea is in the midline and there's J and you're gonna get JVD as I talked about earlier, but they say the trachea is in the midline and there's massively inflated double lung fields and it's a bilateral tension pneumothorax. Fucking weird question, not my opinion. It's on one of the new 2CK forms. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal to make more content. I feel like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.